All right, so let's talk about finding the inverse of a function, and we'll start off with the question, what is the inverse of a function? Now, we're already familiar with function notation when we have f of x equals something. For the inverse of a function, the notation includes this little negative 1 at the top right-hand corner. Now, just keep in mind that this does not represent an exponent. This is not the function raised to the negative 1 power or 1 over f of x. It means something different. So this notation denotes the inverse of some function. Now, by definition, we say that a function, f of x, maps x onto y. What the inverse of that function does is reverse that order, and it maps y onto x. So it's kind of like the opposite. And we can understand this better by looking at it graphically. So first we'll look at the line y equals x. That's that diagonal line where the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are always the same number. Now on that same graph, let's look at the function f of x equals x cubed. And along with that function, we have the corresponding table of values. Now, the inverse of the function f of x equals x cubed is the cube root of x, and I can graph that function as well. And now we can see that what we have is our original function being reflected over that line y equals x. And now to fill out the table for our inverse function, we will see that the x coordinates from the original function become the y coordinates of the inverse and the y-coordinates of the original function become the x-coordinates of the inverse. And this is always the case when we reflect over that line y equals x. And as we were saying earlier, we go from original function that maps x onto y to the inverse function, which maps y onto x. So basically, x and y reverse positions. So now let's use that conceptual understanding of inverse functions to finding the inverse of a given function algebraically. So now, for example, let's find the inverse of the function f of x is equal to 7x minus 4. Now, what we can do is replace f of x with y. Since we know that f of x equals and y equals are the same thing, they both represent the output of the function. So remember now that the inverse of a function maps y onto x. So what we want to do is take x and y and switch their positions. So now what we have here is a new function. And what we need to do next is isolate the y and get it in y equals form, and that will represent the inverse. We can do this pretty easily, first by adding 4 to both sides. On the right side, that negative 4 will cancel out. On the left side, x plus 4, I cannot simplify. So I just leave it as x plus 4. And then finally, I divide both sides by 7. And on the right side, 7 divided by 7, that will cancel out, just become 1. And on the left side, I'm left with x plus 4 over 7. And I cannot simplify this any further. So what I'm left with is the inverse function of x, which equals x plus 4 over 7. And this strategy will work for finding the inverse of any function. So if you understand the concept of an inverse to a function, then the procedure is much easier and makes sense as well. And that's all there is to it.